welcome to Will and True's Gaming Retrospective. You're listening to episode 92 for the week of September 6, 2020. I'm your host, Drew. I am joined by Will. What's going on, Will? What is up, Drew? Dude, um, nothing. <laughs> Dude, I'm still just amazed that, like, we get the, we have the pleasure now of saying episode 92. Like, it feels like... Oh, my God. I bring this up so often, but it feels like yesterday that we were saying episode 17 it really does i wonder like once we hit 100 have we made it i don't know uh maybe we should google it or ask around maybe we should ask the fans and mailbag i i don't know what number uh, qualifies for making it mm. but we could we could just make that rule ourselves and say it's 100 i like it uh, episode 100 we will have made it hmm I like right, episode it. episode 92, which is this episode, we have not made it. We see the light, though. We do see the light. I'm reminded of a Metallica song right now. <laughs> you know, I kind of thought about that, too. <laughs> I was you? like, I wonder if I should bring this up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What the hell was the name of that song? Uh, uh, One Leaf Clover, was it? Oh, No Leaf Clover. No Leaf Clover. Dude, oh, man. that is honestly... Song. Honestly, I personally think it's their best song ever. It's up there. That's an excellent song. And I'm not even that big of a Metallica fan, but when I saw that years ago, the S&M concert, which, by, mind you, they actually came out with a S&M number two recently. Did um, they? They did. Who'd and, they play uh, with? I don't know. I think the San Francisco Symphony okay. Orchestra, I believe. But uh, <laughs> yeah, the the first time I heard No, no Leaf uh, Clover, holy crap, man. Uh what an amazing, amazing track. You are right. It is San Francisco, which uh, I'm pretty sure they used uh, for the first one. I think they did. Huh. And they That's performed so cool. that same song again. That's so cool. I'm, I'm going to have to check that out because when that came out, man, that was that was Oof. incredible. It really was. There weren't a lot of bands that were doing that kind of stuff at that time. And, you know, uh, Metallica was kind of in a, a weird spot. You know, they had just come off of, I think, Load and Reload. And a lot of people were like, Metallica sucks, they sold out. And a lot of people were like, yep, we sold out every <laughs> building in the place. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Whatever that quote was. Anyway. Uh, thank oh, you for Metallica. listening. <laughs> thank you for listening to Metallica and our podcast. We're on the web at WDGRpodcast.com. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at WDGRpodcast. Will, please tell us about your SoundCloud. SoundCloud.com slash uh, Will underscore gear. And I have no SoundCloud, but you can find me at Science Storm on most social media. So what have you been playing, dude? Well, uh, I've still been plugging around with um, Child of Light. Mm. I haven't been playing it as much as I've wanted to. However, I did buy Portal 2 Ooh. for um, PC, which is like mm -hmm. really not like me at all yeah. um but i did and i've wanted to play that game personally for a long time and with you mm -hmm. so it just kind of made sense to get it, it was 9.99 and i'm not a big pc gamer for a number of reasons generally because i'm always terrified that i won't be able to run the game <laughs> and uh <laughs> this one since it came out in 2011 and my imac was built in 2011 i thought there's there's no chance that this is not going to work so, uh, luckily enough, it does run, but mm. I did spend hours, uh, sitting here trying to calibrate my PS3 controller, my PS4 controller, uh, just trying to get a controller to work with the game. And I was so close, but there was one glitch where when you aim the camera up, the portal gun just starts auto firing. And apparently it's a very <laughs> common issue. And I was just so upset about it because I was like, I, I did so much to get to this point. I even right. bought this app for five bucks called, um, uh, let me tell you what it is, a Joystick Mapper. And apparently it allows you to literally remap the controls for a game to whatever controller you use. Okay. So uh, decent reviews. And I thought, you know, this is going to be the answer. And it wasn't. Uh, it was just a complicated mess. I kind of regretted buying it but you know it was only five dollars and um ultimately i ended up getting an update that actually allowed for gamepad control and i thought that was going to fix it still didn't and after all these hours went by i was like you know what i think it's just going to have to be mouse and keyboard which mm. 
I kind of wanted to avoid because if folks know my setup, I don't have like a mechanical keyboard. I don't have a mouse. I have a trackpad and I have like a, a really sleek, low travel time keyboard. So it's not really meant for, uh, for gaming like that. Sure. But I, I messed around with it for a while and I was like, you know what? I, I think I can actually make this work. And then I think it was on a walk. Lauren was like, you know what? Why don't you just use your work mouse? And I was like, huh, I guess I probably could do that. So I, you know, honestly, I didn't even think about it because that's so separate from like just my whole setup. Yeah. And uh, I, I thought that because it was like a Windows mouse or something, it wasn't going to work. And it's not even a Windows mouse. It's just like an Amazon, it's like an Amazon ba- uh, Essentials mouse or whatever, Amazon Basics, some shit. Right. And uh, so it's a mini mouse too. It's not even like a full size mouse. And it's got one of those little tiny like USB dongles or adapters that you just plug right in so i plugged it in last night it worked and it actually didn't work at first and i was like you've got to be fucking kidding me like i couldn't move the camera around i was like why can i not just get this game to work the way i want it and i just restarted the game and once i loaded it up again it worked perfectly so nice uh yeah i'm excited i've played about probably like maybe an hour of the game and i do like where it's going i think it's very uh interesting and different and mm-hmm. uh, I really don't know much about Portal or Portal 2, but I know that it's it's regarded as an excellent game, especially for co-op. So, uh, so you've never played the original, is that correct? No, sir. Do you have a copy of the Orange Box for the PlayStation 3? I do not. Huh. And I'm aware of that. I'm aware yeah. of that box being quite quite special. Um, I mean, it's it's certainly not a requirement for uh for you to play the first game to get the full enjoyment out of the second one um but there are some jokes and uh you know things that happen along the way that do play off of uh you know previous experiences with portal one Mm -hmm. Uh, so if you have an opportunity to get your hands on the first game i can't imagine it's on steam for like any more than like five dollars sure um it's worth playing. It's absolutely worth playing. In fact, I'll look at my Steam library. I, I may have an extra copy of it that I can gift you. I'll, I'll, I don't know that I do, mm-hmm. um, but if I do, it's yours um, because it's uh, it's worth checking out. And it's it's a reasonably short game, all things considered. You know, Portal 2, I think, is a little bit more expansive. Um, and I think it's kind of just... I think you'll get more fulfillment out of the second one if you play the first one if that makes sense okay so it's uh essentially kind of like a staple in the in the uh sequel well i mean i'm sure you've heard of the the cake is a lie meme right i have yes everybody knows about that um that got its start in the first game and it really is this whole thing that kind of spans a large chunk of the game um they reference it in the second game if i recall Mm-hmm. But but not to the same degree. Okay. So, but the second game actually adds um, more layers um, than than the first one did too. So you're going to have some different voices in the mix. I'm not sure who you're talking to right now. If you're talking to Gladys or Wheatley. Hmm. Uh, not sure. I don't remember. Are you talking with a woman robot or a man robot? Uh, currently a male robot. Okay, so that's Wheatley. That's voiced by Stephen Merchant. Um, he is an absolutely brilliant British comedian and uh, is just w- wonderful and charming uh, in this game. Eventually, you'll encounter uh, J.K. Simmons playing the role. Of, oh, I uh, love that dude. Yeah, so the, the voice cast on this game is top-notch, and the humor is right up there with it. Um, this is a very cheeky game. And you're gonna you're gonna love it. Like I'm I'm super excited for you to be playing it. Yeah, I I don't know if I'm gonna continue playing on my own. I probably will because I am actually kind of intrigued to keep going. Mm. But it was so weird actually loading up Steam again because not much has really changed. There there's always a fucking update. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, big picture mode still looks kind of the same. Hearing the sound of big picture mode uh, mm. really just kind of made me feel very sort of just in a familiar place. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's really just because I actually used Steam quite a bit some time ago when I was playing more games on my boot camp side of Windows. Yeah. And 
I play Dark Souls 2 with Tom on Steam, and I think we use Skype to chat. So I have history with Steam. And okay. I think I was expecting more uh, sweeping changes, but they weren't really there. But yeah, that's okay. Steam has essentially not changed since 2004. I, yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem that way. It, it really hasn't. And maybe that's a good thing. You know, they have a layout that kind of works, and it is somewhat customizable, so you can change it to your liking. Um, actually, you know, it's, it's interesting that we're talking about Steam because I just heard that um, RetroArch is going to be coming out on Steam for free. And RetroArch is the front end for a number of emulators, um, which I know that you've had some issues kind of setting up in the past. Mm -hmm. um, they try to take a lot of the guesswork out of getting the emulation process working. So when that launches and comes out of beta, like I want to sit down with that and, and see if it's possible to get that working on your computer, because that's going to open up a whole new world of possibilities for us. Sure. You know, and it's the kind of thing where like you drag and drop the, the ROM that you want to play into a folder, RetroArch sees it. And then it's like, okay, let's go. And that's it. Hmm. There's no, no, you know, configuring dip switches and, making sure you have the right ROM set to go with this and that. And all the, all the issues that you had with MAME don't exist. That's good yeah. because I did have quite a few issues. And honestly, you know, in retrospect, it's really just because I didn't know what I was doing. Well, I mean, yes and no. Um, a lot of that stuff is pretty complex if you go down the wrong rabbit hole. You know, like, uh, you, you'll, depending on like, so I know, I know that our friend Damien sent you like the bare bones version of the program because that's what he uses, but no disrespect to him. He doesn't like change. And that version is probably 20 years old. Yes. Yeah. He's very, <laughs> he, he's very much like he knows, ex <laughs> he knows exactly where to go. Like when, when he shows you something it's actually kind of brilliant because he has a mind for mm. just kind of knowing exactly what, where to click and what to open. And you see him do like a million things in one minute, but only he understands how to do that. And then mm -hmm. it's hard to convey that to somebody else naturally because there's too many steps, there's too many methods. So when he was trying right. to help me, it just literally was not translating. And that's when I, uh, you know, did everything. Yeah. Because that version of that program has been updated you know, a couple dozen times since he downloaded it and figured all that stuff out on his own. And with those updates, they've eliminated that process. They've simplified it for stupid people like you and me. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's very much like a explain like I'm five kind of thing totally. when it comes to that, that sort of stuff. And if you're not ex explaining it that way, then I'm out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, man, uh, overall, I, hey, do you want to announce like what we're going to do? Yeah, uh, we're going to play Portal 2 co-op. And That's right. I'm not entirely sure when we're going to start. Maybe this week. Um, I don't know. I think it's going to be kind of like up in the air, depending on our schedules and stuff. Mm -hmm. our, our goal is to stream this on Twitch mm. and to do some sort of a Let's Play series on YouTube as well. Yes. And I think this kind of came about because we have talked about the game several times over the we course have. of the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always reference that that Hutch and Cnanners playthrough on YouTube because it was something that I watched religiously back in 2011, 2012. Mm. And uh, it was just a pleasure to watch. And I was like, man, this looks like a phenomenal co-op game. It is. There, there are so many co-op games that are just not super great. So as much as we're thinking about some other ones we're going to do after this, we're very excited for this. And uh, yeah, man, I, I'm ready to kind of just play a game with you. Mm. And uh, that's something that we uh, ironically have not done very often at all. <laughs> so. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of crazy. You know, we've done a lot of games, you know, competitively against each other, you know, um, in person or uh, occasionally online when possible, but never like a co-op. I don't really play a lot of co-op co co games, um, which is kind of disappointing because I really do enjoy them. I, I, I like that community experience um 
I'm not good enough at video games anymore to be competitive on any sort of serious level. So mm -hmm. for me, the idea of just sitting back, relaxing, chatting with my bud, playing a co-op game, man, that sounds like a great night to me. Oh, totally. I am so I'm, pumped for it. I'm looking forward to it. So we will have details on that as we figure them out. Uh, so guys, keep an eye out for that. And uh, we'll post all that in our Discord room. There's going to be a link for that in the show notes, or just hit up our website. Maybe we'll uh, even shill out the stream on our website once uh, we're ready to start doing that, too. What do you think? Sounds good to me. Cool, man. Yeah. I have but, a question um, for you, Drew. Yeah, yeah, what's up? Were you going to say something about, else about uh, Portal? Well, actually, I, I wanted to ask you one other question about Steam, because I okay. know with uh, with Macs, you kind of have like that virtual Windows environment, or what? I'm not 100% sure on what the terminology is, but... Like, basically, you can run Windows in, like, a container. Is that true? Oh, with Macs? Yeah. Um, so the way that it works on a Mac is you use Boot Camp, which is already right. pre-installed onto the computer, and it allows you to install Windows on a partition of your drive, and you just switch over using Boot Camp to get onto that OS. So when you installed Steam, did you do that version of it or did you just install the mac version of steam mac version of steam and the, the okay. reason being is because i actually don't even own that windows disk anymore i'm pretty sure i tossed it when i was purging and uh it was a windows 7 yeah. uh disk and i think i tossed it because i was like you know i'm just i don't think i'm going back to installing this because it takes up too much space in my uh hard drive yeah and uh i kind of regretted it when i was messing around with this over the weekend because i was like shit I don't think I have that fucking CD because I thought about actually going back and reinstalling Windows so I could access more of my games mm -hmm. and start thinking about, okay, there's a few games I want to finish up and maybe there are some more I can play with Drew. But uh, at this point, I would need to buy a copy of Windows again in order to do that. Not necessarily. Um, Windows allows you to download uh, installation files straight from the Microsoft website. And if you have an email address that was registered with a previous copy of windows. You may be able to get a legal copy running on your computer. Okay. That'd be so, something to consider. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely something we can discuss further offline. Um, it's all, you know, on the up and up, it's not like piracy or anything of that nature. Um, you know, I've used my email address to unlock a valid windows key, uh, for windows 10 on multiple machines and, uh, never had any issues. Yeah, so. I know sometimes it can be a little tricky. Yep, but uh, I can kind of guide you through that, um, you know, at a later date if you're interested. But um, it's it's cool to hear, though, that it seems to be running really well on the Mac. I don't really know much about Steam and what games are compatible um, on the Mac. There's a handful. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I would love to look into it further and see, you know, if there's something that we could do co-op. Because I can tell you from, from my perspective, at, at the very least... Um, streaming is a hell of a lot easier <laughs> when you're going straight through the computer. Um, we did a stream on Friday night of Fall Guys, and um, that was a lot of fun. But from the streaming point of view, it was a fucking disaster. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you were in the same shoes I was in when I was dealing with Portal 2 controller issues. Kind of. You know, um, it took hours. Yeah, I spent I spent the whole afternoon setting everything up, getting it all working. And then to come, come to find out half of it didn't work properly. Although the important stuff did, right. We were able to get the stream working and, uh, people were able to see what was going on. My ugly face was on the screen. Um, <laughs> my microphone worked. We did have the party chat piped in as well too. Mm -hmm. I guess the levels were okay on that. I couldn't hear shit from the party. Oh. Um, because, in order for this to work properly, we were, I was using the PlayStation 4. Yep. Out, outputting everything through HDMI into my capture card, which is an Elgato HD. It's an external capture card. Okay. And, and that connects to my computer by USB. With the way the party chat is set up on the consoles, I think Xbox is the same way too. Although, I'm not 100% on that. The way that's set up, I can either have the party chat go through the controller into my headphones... Or I can have it go through the HDMI out to the television. Cannot do both. It's one or the other. So it seemed kind of silly to have a multiplayer game where we're having a community game night 
and you can't hear the rest of the party, right? Yeah. Um, so I chose to have everything go out through the HDMI cable, which means the party is now audible on my television. Problem with that is some people have lower voices than others, right? So, for example, um, Bree was was uh, in the chat room and she had a very low voice. And then I would crank the volume up on the TV, and then you would chime in, and your voice is coming through like three times as loud as hers. Oh, easily. So, <laughs> so I'm hearing I'm hearing like this this very. <laughs> quiet mouse and all of a sudden this lion <laughs> screaming <at me. laughs> oh boy and and it was also getting picked up by the microphone which i was using for uh you know speaking to twitch directly uh-huh so i tried to put on a noise gate which was working some of the time but not all of the time uh, it was just it was just really crazy um and then i had this thing set up to play a couple of the songs that you wrote that are available on your SoundCloud during like our intermission screen and our starting screen and ending screen. I was like super proud of it. I'm like, man, this is going to be great. And then you loaded up the stream and you're like, dude, where's my music? I'm like, what do you mean? Where's your music? I'm listening to it now. <laughs> like, no, it's not playing. Well, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was odd. It's one of those weird things that happens that just kind of drives you nuts because when it works halfway or it works like 80%, I find that to be maddening versus not working at all. And it's kind of like exactly yeah. what happened with the portal thing. It's like, why give me literally 99% of the controls and then the 1% is literally like game breaking. Yeah, I agree. So. And, and it's, I'd rather have nothing or everything. None of this in between stuff. Yeah. Because then I can set my expectations. You know, I don't have expectations that it's all working. And then I find out that it doesn't. Mm hmm. But, uh, man, Fall Guys was a trip, wasn't it? It was, man. Uh, what a <clears throat> what an odd game. <laughs> I mean, it's so out of my realm of, uh, you know, it's, it's out of my wheelhouse, as they would say. And, uh, you know, it, it's silly. And I'm all right with silly games now and again. Uh, generally, when I've had a couple drinks, they seem to be more fun. <laughs> <laughs> I did not do any drinking. Maybe I should have. But yeah, uh, I was I, I was saving it for the following day because we hung out. But, um, it, you know, it's fun. I, I think there is a there's a level of like irritation that comes with it because it's one of those games that you know is incredibly annoying with the way that the obstacles are and that's fine. But I think mm. my big make my, excuse me my biggest complaint was being eliminated and then having to sit there and spectate for a while. And spectating is fine because I actually don't mind doing it, but I just wasn't really expecting that, and I felt like since I wasn't great at the game, I was spectating almost the whole night. Mm. And it was cool hanging out with you guys and stuff, but it would have been a little bit cooler if I got the chance to play just a little bit more. And we had to, you know, kind of mess with things because it can only be a team of four. So we ended up doing team of four and then like a team of two, which was, again, mm. fine. But uh, overall, it was um, it was fun. I think I yeah. just need to give it more time. Well, you know, it, with the way the game is designed, you're not obliged to spectate under, you know, like regular circumstances. Um, I think when we're streaming with the group, you know, I, I think it's more fun to spectate and kind of cheer them on, uh, you know, or, or watch them get eliminated and, and things of that nature. That was fun but, too, by the way. Yeah. You know, watching, uh, like some of those soccer matches and everything, you know, that was, that was just crazy. And like, cause I suck at the game too. I made, I made it to round two a handful of times. I made it to round three, maybe a quarter of those times. So I didn't really do much better than you. But I hear what you're saying, man. Like, uh, and I think that if you were to play the game, kind of like spend a little bit of time with it, maybe with a smaller party or by yourself. And then when you die, you just you back out of that and then you just go back into a brand new game again. You don't have to wait for the, the victor sure. to, to be shown, you know. And I, I think that is uh, actually a strength of the game because it gives you the option of whether or not you want to watch or you want to just get the hell out and jump back in again. That seems to be the case, you know, I, it's somewhat fault of my own to have not prepared a little bit uh, mm. by playing solo and, and just playing with random people and getting used to the controls and, and what does what, because going in blind like that, you can certainly get eliminated very quickly because mm. yeah. you're just getting run over. I called it Black Friday the game, which I felt like <laughs> was kind of accurate. <laughs> uh, so, you know, 
uh, if you're not ready for that kind of uh, stampede of jelly beans and with weird pants. <laughs> <laughs> um, my God, dude, your pants were like something out of like a old Madonna, like eighties music video. This <laughs> is <laughs> fucking weird, dude. <laughs> uh, oh, but it was God, fun, that... man. We had some good laughs and honestly watching, uh, Joey can and, and Jimmy and stuff. It was, uh, we had some good, we had some good fun. Hey, Joey can <laughs> <laughs> It's so much fun to just, uh, just rip on his name, you know, and just put that, uh, uh that Sopranos touch to it. Uh, poor Joe, but yeah, no, I had a I had a blast doing that, and uh, you know maybe we'll fire it up again. It's free, you know. Um, well, it's it's not free anymore, but anybody that grabbed it while it was free, you know, you'll have access to it forever. There's a bird. I don't know if you hear this fucking bird, dude. I do. You do? <laughs> I do. J- what the fuck? <laughs> I, maybe it's asking for dinner, or it's a hawk. I, I don't know. Does it sound like a seagull? Serious question. I don't know. I have because my it does, headphones it might, on. Because it could be oh. a hawk. We, we've got some noisy hawks in our neighborhood. We get hawks. Yeah, I mean, we get hawks around here. I don't think that's a hawk, though. I don't know what the fuck that is, but I'm going to shoot it. Oh, God. Well, hopefully it's not, like, hurt or something, because that would suck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm really not going to shoot the bird. I love birds. But, I know. Um... You know what it probably is? It's probably got like a nest of babies or something, and the neighborhood cat is walking around, and it's warning everybody about the cat. Could be. I've seen that before. Oh, yeah. They definitely have their own alarm system. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, segueing on to our next topic. Let's see here. Uh, not much to say about Spirit Spiritfarer. I, I have found myself um, kind of adjusting my mental impressions of the game and and really just using it as a cozy way to kind of settle down for the night Mm -hmm. you know when like i'm getting ready to go to bed but i still got like an hour i want to kill i just want to play something relaxing let me fire up spirit fair do a couple you know quests understandable and it's fitting that role nicely you know the music in that game is very soothing very calming very relaxing dialogue is fine Nothing that happens in that game is so pressing that it just can't wait for me to get to it. You know, there's there's no timer on anything. Nothing expires. It's a very, very casual game that, as far as I could tell, has no means of failure. And um, I, I, I like it. Um, I just don't know that I'm ever really going to have anything more to say about it than that. Mm. Um you know, I haven't gotten to the point yet where I've I've helped anybody cross over. So maybe my opinion will change then. But as of right now, I'm just kind of bringing more and more people onto the ship, building houses, upgrading my farms, getting more uh, upgrades for the ship, catching fish, finding crates, chopping down trees. You know, all that monotonous stuff that's part of all these, like, farming simulators and, you know, Animal Crossing type games and, and Stardew Valleys and, you know, um, it's fine. I like it. I don't love it, but it's nice. It's relaxing and uh, it's it's cool, I guess. Yeah, I think, you know, <laughs> that's it's kind of... Um... <clears throat> You know, when I kind of re- recall what I said last time, it's it's the same kind of response. You know, I think that a game can be fine, as you, as you call it, and still be something that you can play. Uh, yeah. I don't think every game has to be, you know, this AAA masterpiece for you to still have a place for it in your library. And Agreed. what's nice about Spirit Fair is it sounds like you're doing exactly uh, what perhaps the game is intended to do, which is to be loaded up after a long day of work or before bed. Uh, I don't think anybody's you know, getting out of work and they're like, oh my God, I can't wait to play Spirit Fair. And like, it's not one, <laughs> it's not one of those kind of <laughs> games. You know, that's what people say about Call of Duty or right. PUBG or Skyrim or something because there's so much stuff to do that you're just, you know, it has that addictive quality. It sounds like Spirit sure. Fair is just, it's tranquil and uh, that's okay. Yeah, I think tranquil is the best way to put it. Um, and that's fine. You know, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. It's fine. Uh, outside of that, um, I accidentally started playing a game today that I didn't realize I had installed on my hard drive. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to butcher this name. Apologies in advance. It's new to Game Pass. It's called uh, Toho Toho 
Luna Knights. Okay. Spelled T O U H O U, Luna Knights. I don't know anything about this series, but apparently this is a Metroidvania for a gaming series that is fairly extensive overseas. Uh, uh, let me see if I can find some of the. There's like there's almost like no information on this game aside from what's on Steam. Um, yeah, I noticed that when I was actually doing some research, I could only find really like a Steam link and some other stuff. There was no wiki. Yeah. Um, the game has been out on Steam since 2019, February 2019. It's very new to Game Pass, so I'm not sure what the deal is there. Uh, but it is a Metroidvania with a, a anime-inspired art style, uh, anime-inspired uh, inspired graphics, anime-inspired characters. Um, it has like this just, it is just like oozing and dripping with anime. But it's like an anime fever dream on crack. <laughs> <laughs> and the I, I've only been in like the first stage. And it's got one of those soundtracks to it that's like when you first start playing, it's like, all right, this is kind of cool, kind of catchy. And then you hear it looped over and over and over and over oh, and over and over and over. And I'm at the point now where I'm pretty sure I'm going to just uninstall the game. <laughs> because, because the soundtrack is that fucking annoying and that's I, oh my gosh i never really thought about a soundtrack being game breaking but i guess i guess it could be i dropped a link in our discord room um in the chit chat room to the song that i've been exposed to over the course of an hour it never changed never changed oh no and it's a shame because the game really does have some pretty interesting concepts going on um, you have the ability to control time and either slow time down or stop it completely. And when you do, it changes the way that your character interacts with enemies, right? So essentially your character has, um, at least in the beginning, um, main ability is to throw knives and you have, uh, hit points and magic points. When you throw knives, they consume magic points, but if you slow down time, when you throw knives, they consume time instead. So you have like a counter of a hundred seconds, right? And you can slow down time or freeze time and throwing knives ends up using, um, that counter instead of using your magic points. Okay. Magic points do regenerate, but it's over a slow period of time. So it's kind of like you're, you're playing this constant juggle between whether or not to freeze enemies, uh, you know, versus just attacking them regularly. And you can um, kind of jump close to an enemy to uh, regain health or regain uh, magic points as well. But depending on whether or not the enemies are frozen in time determines whether or not you're going to get health points or magic points. So if you're low on health, like you kind of want to trigger these enemies and jump really close to them. Um, they had a term for it, which I, I can't remember at the, at the moment now. Um, trying to see if I can find it, but, but basically it's, it's like, you're, you're just jumping over them without getting hit. So you're like stealing their life force. Essentially, mm -hmm. if they're active when you're doing it, then you get health. If they're frozen when they're, when you're doing it, you get magic points. So you have this balance of, of deciding whether or not to keep them at a distance and avoid getting hit, playing it safe, just using your magic points. Or if you're low on health, now you have to start being a little bit more aggressive with your play style and, you know, kind of go get it. Like, you know, leave them unfrozen, jump in, try to use skill to your advantage to get back those health points, and then, you know, hopefully get to a save point before you die. And all of this plays super well. Uh, it's very tight. The controls feel good. I'm not crazy about the button layout. I feel like they kind of fuck things up because, like, on the Xbox controller, B is the jump button. A is the attack button. And that goes against everything that's natural to me at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, I'm trying to use A as a jump button and X as the attack button. And it doesn't work that way. I, I guess I could remap it, but I, I try to play games with their intended controls as much as possible because I'd like to think that the developers, for the most part, know what they're doing and there's a reason for it, right? Yeah. So, when I first play a game, 
I try really hard not to fuck with the controls unless I'm absolutely positive that it's not working out for me and it's not going in a different direction. So I've left the controls on the default and I do find myself, you know, stopping time a little bit more frequently than I'd like to. Um, thankfully it's not a game breaking process, you know, that too regenerates. So it's not like I'm wasting, uh, you know, an item or something of that nature. Um, and, and the thing is, is like, this is a pretty cool game. It's very interesting. I like the art style. I like, I like everything about it, but the music is so fucking bad that I just, I, I don't know if I can continue. God, that sucks. Cause otherwise I might actually, you know, spend some more time with this game. Yeah. You know, I'm watching, I'm actually, while we're talking about it, I'm watching uh, some of the videos on Steam and, and seeing some of the platforming and the boss battles that are coming up. And it's like, oh man, this looks nuts. Um, I don't know if I can do it. I watched it. <laughs> I watched a small portion of gameplay and it looked kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, I, there's potential there. I love Metroidvania uh, games. You know, it's one of my favorite genres. And this is, you know, right up your like right up that alley, um, right from the get go. There's sections that you can't get into until you uh, learn how to slide. You know, like there's like walls that are blocked off, but they're available underneath. You know, if I I just can't crouch and get underneath them, well, that's a power that you unlock. And just about maybe about ten minutes before I stopped playing this afternoon, I had unlocked that power and I'd started backtracking and getting some of those. Uh, those spots um, that I couldn't get to before. And, and I also unlocked the ability to open up certain doors that I couldn't unlock before. So they're, they're starting to open up the map and, and really allow you to start putting some of those powers to use, which is great. But like, as far as I can tell, this is going to be a huge game. Oh shit. Well, so. uh, um, man, I feel like sometimes you find yourself in a position with some of these games that, or, or letting you down too much. Mm. And uh, we got to fix that. Well, <laughs> I don't I know mean, how. So, you know, I when I said that I originally started this game accidentally, um, what I hadn't realized is that apparently I must have installed it on my Xbox through the Game Pass app. Mm -hmm. um, because I saw this in, um, I saw this on the Xbox dashboard uh, in, as part of the store. It's like, oh, let me check this out. Maybe it's cool. And all of a sudden I'm playing it. I'm like, okay. Um, didn't realize I was going to do that, but cool. Let's just go with it, right? And, you know, it was kind of weird, but I'm like, all right, this kind of looks like it might be a Metroidvania. And, and pretty quickly you realize it is, you know, and Metroidvanias are 100% up my alley. I love them. So I'm like, cool. This is going to be fun. And then that music just kept going. Oh, boy. I'm gonna and, have to check this out so I can really experience the uh, the hell. Yeah, the just hell of this just music. just put it on repeat for like two hours. Ooh, that's probably not a good idea. It's it's a three minute track. It loops endlessly, quite well. I'm gonna paste it in here for you as well too. Okay, I, I've got to just preview this just briefly. <sighs> yeah, do it up. Uh, here we go. Oh yes. Um, here we go. Stand by. Mm -hmm. This is riveting. It's definitely frantic. Mm, very frantic. <laughs> yeah, no, this would definitely drive me nuts. Uh, yeah. th this is one of those, you know, this reminds me of, and it's probably just because I was not doing well in the game, but <laughs> with, uh, one of the bosses in Sekiro, I actually had to turn the music off because it was just like, bah, bah, like it was just completely <laughs> overwhelming. And I was doing so poorly at the same time. I was like, that's it. Yeah. I'm turning the music off. And honestly it helped, but you know, yeah. you can't play a game in silence, you know, and you're not going to be one of those guys that, that, uh, loads up, you know, modern warfare and you got your fucking drake playlist going on at the same time <laughs> no you no, know you're not gonna play not. that you know no you're not gonna do that but um you know i was kind of discussing it in the chat room before and pucks has suggested why not just you know mute the music and play some podcasts mm. that's a that's a valid argument um you i know, guess I, I, a lot of people do that and you know they have great success with it I think it depends, I guess, on the game, and it depends on how invested you are with the music in a game. 
I, I think agree. for me, I, it probably wouldn't work because I'm very much into music with games. So if I don't have that, I, I don't know. It depends on the game. I'd have to try it before right. I can even really say much. Yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I, that would be something I'd have to think about. But because um, there's no like, I don't think there's any voice acting. It's all text prompts. So, you know, just sound effects at that point. And the sound effects are fine. You know, there wasn't anything special there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, that's all right. You know, you can walk away from this if, I, if I think, need be. Um, I'm not invested in it enough to say I'm in too deep. So I, I think I may, you know, be, well, get out while I can. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Because I, I never intended on starting it in the first place. I was just on my dashboard, just kind of like, just fucking around, looking around and seeing what's out there, you know? Mm -hmm. And I didn't anticipate launching a brand new game and, uh, you know, actually liking it and then hating it. <laughs> it's been a roller coaster of a day. Oh my gosh, Drew. <laughs> uh. Oh man. So what's this, uh, this new game that you're, you've got on your radar, Black Myth Wukong? Mm. Tell so, me about that. Sure. Uh, so I actually saw a video, uh, what do you call it? Like a video image on YouTube, uh, probably about like a week ago on Maximilian Dude's channel. A uh, big fan mm. of that guy. And uh, I kind of just glanced over it and I never clicked on it. But I was like, ooh, that, that looks kind of cool. And of course, you know, the caption was just showing his face super excited. And it said something like this game looks, you know, amazing. And I finally got around to watching it over the weekend. And man, I, I was definitely blown away. Uh, I'm just going to use Wikipedia here as a reference, but apparently it's a upcoming action adventure game by a Chinese indie developer, Game Science, which I've never heard of them. Mm. Uh, they're based on, or the game is based on the classical 16th century Chinese novel Journey to the West. Again, know nothing about that. Uh, the gameplay has been described as Souls-like. Definitely looks like Dark Souls mixed with Sekiro, which is perfect for me. Uh, and then you control a character called Sun Wukong, also known as the Monkey King. So he basically looks like a, a crossbreed, like half monkey, half human. And mm. when, once I saw that, I was like, mm, I don't know if this is for me because I, I don't right. really do stuff like that. Uh, right. Sometimes it just kind of turns me off because I just start thinking this is kind of silly. But once I watched the 13 minute gameplay video, which is pre alpha gameplay, does not look like pre alpha. It looks like the game's no. done, <laughs> um, and it looks next gen. I was just, uh, I was really pumped, man. I mean, it looks like just a high octane Sekiro with a monkey man and a staff, and it looks challenging, which I kind of am intrigued about. Um, the setting looks amazing. The lighting looks really good. And apparently he has these abilities to transform into an insect or a giant monster or an enemy that he just killed. So, for example, in the, in the video, he kills a, a boss or a mini boss and then he can turn into that boss oh. to fight another boss, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, hmm. I guess this came out August 20th. So I'm a little late to the, the boat, but it's not that long ago. And uh, apparently within one day, it says here, the video had nearly 2 million views on YouTube and 10 million views on Billy Billy. Uh, I have no idea what that is. I guess some other kind of video service. I've never heard of it. Uh, it says the game will be sold as a one-time purchase with possible DLCs. And the developer aims to release the game for PC as well as mainstream consoles. Um, no release date. Uh, what's also interesting about this game is it's Chinese. And I think when we think of foreign games, we're thinking of like a Polish developer or a Swedish developer or Japanese, or, or Japanese of course, um, yeah. or, or American. <clears throat> so when I found out it was Chinese, I thought that was really interesting and different. And apparently there's a market for Chinese video games that I'm not aware of. And that's what I've been hearing in, in some of these uh, reaction videos and analysis videos. Uh, but overall, man, I, I like how it has like Buddhist themes and there's like a lot of mythology mixed in. So it just for me, it, it wraps in, you know, Asura's Wrath and, and Bayonetta and uh, Sekiro all into one. And 
it's got my name written all over it. I watched the video before we started recording, or I, I should say I skipped around a little bit. I maybe watched about five minutes total combined. And, you know, I saw this whole introduction uh, where they're kind of laying out the story. And mm -hmm. then the next thing you know, I'm flying around like a fly. Yeah, cicada. And is that what it was, a cicada? A yes, sir. So I, I let that play for a little while, and then it just kind of went on. And then I fast forwarded about a minute and I was still flying around. I'm like, did Will just like fall in love with the game where you're a bug? Dude, I probably would. <laughs> <laughs> I such mean, a it wouldn't be, freak. it wouldn't be like too far out of the realm of, of you know, possibility for you. But, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, finally I, I like went like five minutes in and, and you transform into this like character and then you start fighting and it, it, Definitely felt more like a Souls like game or a um Dynasty Warriors kind of game. You sure. Know, maybe. Well, maybe maybe that's a bad comparison, but well, like one one man versus the army kind of thing. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you probably saw maybe a couple snippets of him fighting a wave of enemies. Mm. Which I thought was kind of interesting and I was like, mm, how's this gonna play out? And I think they're gonna be developing the game where you can fight a huge amount of enemies and it would actually be practical where you wouldn't just, it wouldn't just be like a mess, like an yeah. Assassin's Creed kind of mess. Um, but I think what blew me away about the game are the, the visuals, uh, the, just the way that the animations are in combat look superb. And, uh, I'm just, I'm just interested, man. It looks, uh, I think I'm craving a game that's very different. And even though this kind of has a blend of some of the games I mentioned previously, the fact that you can transform into a cicada and there's other transformations and you can transform into a boss that maybe you killed, that mm. kind of stuff seems different to me. And uh, the fact that you're playing like a monkey king and there's a lot, a lot of like sort of mythology, to yeah. me that's different. I, I feel like we don't see that in games that much. And if we do, I guess I'm not playing them. Right. But uh, I'm intrigued. Um, the cicada thing is a little bit odd. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it, but it's it's just... It's neat, and I want to learn more about it. I remember I actually asked uh, somebody on a, on a Twitch stream recently what he thinks about it, Some somebody that I really respect in the community, and he actually said, you know, I, I feel like it's so early in development, I can't really be hyped for it. I disagree with that for you know a little bit because I get his point, but there's enough gameplay here where I think that it can cause a lot of hype, and it certainly already has. It seems significant, like the amount of gameplay that they're showing. It's like 15 minutes of video. I feel like this is what more game devs uh, and studios need to do. This game ha has had no trailers that I'm aware of. They're just like, here's fucking 13 minutes of gameplay. Enjoy. I wish more studios would do that. And I, yeah. I don't know enough about the process where that would necessarily be possible. But hey, if they can do it, I'm sure we can see a little bit more of that from some other game studios. Yeah, I mean, I had never heard about it at all. And then you just kind of you know, dropped it on my doorstep, You're like, bam, here you go. I'm like, huh, all right. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, most of my gaming news now comes from only a small handful of YouTube channels that I'm subscribed to. I don't even mm. really visit gaming websites that much anymore. I mm. should really, but I just don't have one that I'm loyal to anymore. Yeah, uh, you know. Things change. I get it. I get notifications in like uh, my my Chrome uh, homepage, uh, my phone. Mm -hmm. So I get a lot of my gaming news from that. It's kind of curated from a few different sources. Um, but it's it's gaming news is not the same anymore, man. Like, right? There's a there's a few really good sites, but most of them are just producing so much content it's like just getting lost in the sea of other shit well said man that that's exactly it you know when you go to IGN now or any of these sites it's it's just a page of a wall of mixed content and <clears throat> i feel like back in the day when you and i were younger in our 20s even uh you would go to IGN or GameSpot or whatever it may be and it was just gaming news and it just seemed like it was organized better and now I feel like it's more about TV shows and music, and it's just too much. Well, you know, IGN in particular has always been a multimedia uh, website. I remember, you know, years ago, 
uh, getting music news from them. You know, music.ign.com was one of my favorite sites to go to to kind of get the latest updates on a lot of the bands I was into. So that's nothing new, uh, but I do believe it's more front and center than it used to be. Yes. But the, the other thing is with IGN and GameStop, or GameStop, GameSpot in particular, is the amount of video content that they're producing. And if you look at most of their articles, and especially their reviews, it's word for word the same content that you're getting in the video copy. So you're just getting duplicated information. They're trying to sell you more on the video content because they're getting revenue from YouTube um, through the ads and everything. Uh, and people are just engaging with video. Nobody reads anymore. Nope. And it's a shame because when I do take the time to actually read a review, it's so much better mm. than, than sometimes watching a video. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I, I generally will go for video sometimes more often because it's just a little bit more, um, I guess, visually, visually pleasing and visuals matter to me and I want to see what the game is like. But there's there's still something special about written reviews and mm. you know i like joe's content i like uh, a lot of people's written reviews because they sometimes can express more in words than they can in video and even though sure. there's a lot of commentary over video it's obviously shortened because most reviews are three to four minutes yeah yeah but uh, so it goes i guess yeah it's the way of things well Speaking of uh, websites and press, there was a lovely leak very early this morning, or very late last night, I'm not sure which, uh, regarding the Xbox Series S and the Xbox Series X, their pricing and release date. Mm -hmm. And while Xbox has yet to comment on the pricing for the Series X, they did confirm the S is going to be hitting what was it 299 uh or yes is it 399 299 299 november 10th for the digital only xbox series s so wait say that again you said it's a digital only correct i do see that now because i'm actually watching the trailer that's attached yeah. to the link that i put in and i i didn't want to go down this road but since uh, a lot of folks did with the PS5, this reminds me, and you would you would understand this because we kind of dabble with house shit. Um, mm. <laughs> it looks like one of those ductless air conditioning units, <laughs> which are like apparently all the rage right now, by the way. Like I saw one uh. at like Lowe's or Home Depot recently. And I was like, oh, I've seen these attached to some houses. I don't understand how it works. I'm imagining it just doesn't work with ducts. Um, so yeah. maybe it's a, a little bit uh, easier to work with, but I it will looks be just more like than that. happy to explain all of it to you off offline because uh, we have been considering those for our home. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's right. You have. We've done the research. <laughs> so that's what it looks like. It looks like that uh, or it looks like a weird like speaker. Yeah. T uh, to me, this looks like a reference monitor. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, like a like high gonna, end. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to put a pair of these up on my, my wall, my uh, Harman Kardon reference monitors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this is straight out of the Best Buy Magnolia room, dude. Totally, totally. It's like, uh, what um, brand is this? They're like Marantz, sir. And you're like, oh, yeah. okay, gotcha. Yep, yeah, I'll take five. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that'll be $14,000 <laughs> <laughs> for two speakers. No, you said five, sir. Oh, but still. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, they are, they're going right in for it, man. Um, you know, the, the specs on this thing are pretty reduced. It's only got a 500 gigabyte hard drive, which is expandable, but um, I, I think that that's going to be a mistake because that's mm. like, that's like two games. Yeah, at least <laughs> give us a terabyte, man. Like if you're going to, yeah. you know, hype these games up as being, you know, quality, they're going to be big. Right. So, so th the graphics horsepower on this model is reduced, right? The, the way they're marketing these two systems are... Very similar to uh, PS4 versus PS4 Pro or, you know, um, Xbox Series X versus the original Xbox One. You know, it's supposed to be this graphical fidelity leap from the S to the X. Also, I just want to reiterate, 
Fuck Microsoft for this naming convention that they have. I hate it. I know everybody hates it. It's stupid. Use different letters, please. Just call it something cool, man. You know? Yes. Just call it something cool. Like, I don't know, the Xbox Neo. You know, just yeah. just something like that. Or maybe like Xbox 4. Sure. That I mean, just... that's mind-blowing, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, it really is that simple. Um, I have a redundant question, perhaps. Yeah, so yes. this is a digital only system. We've confirmed that. Yeah. Now, unless you said something earlier and it, I just, it went right through me or I'm missing something, but, and I know we've touched on the fact that this hard drive is 500 gig- gigabytes, but why isn't the hard drive fucking enormous? I, I don't know. I mean, am I... Not thinking clearly, but wouldn't shouldn't it be like fifty terabytes <laughs> if it's digital well, only? So the the big thing with uh, both the Xbox and the PlayStation this generation are uh, hard drive speeds. So both companies are putting the fastest possible hard drives into these systems that they can, which by nature tends to lend itself towards lower um, size hard drives just because price versus technology, you know? Mm -hmm. So I can go and I can, like, for example, right, I can buy a one terabyte SSD for on sale 100 bucks, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Or I can buy an external 12 terabyte regular platter hard drive for about 160, 140 on sale. So the price point for those two devices is vastly different, right? And and really the case usage is as well. That larger hard drive is where I'm going to be storing media, photos, videos, you know, um, any kind of editing projects I'm working on, I'd be putting on that 12 terabyte hard drive. Whereas the smaller hard drive, uh, the one terabyte, it's going to be faster. That's the one where I'm going to install Windows on. I'm going to install all my Adobe software on. I'm going to install anything that I'm, uh, you know, any programs that I'm using on a regular basis is going to go on the faster hard drive. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to find this balance between storage size, speed, cost, and... I think because they're they're the, the Series S isn't intended to be on par with the X, but just digital. It's not the same system. I just sent you a link with the specs on it, right? I was just and, looking those over. Yeah, so so you can kind of see like right off the bat, the processor's the same, but the graphics horsepower is completely different. You're looking at twelve teraflops versus four. Um, now I don't understand what that shit means. Like that's really up to a developer to, to, you know, determine, but it's not like it's, you're not comparing apples to apples with these two systems. They're not meant to compete with each other. It's the, the series X is meant for the enthusiasts. The series S is meant for the parent who's buying a Christmas gift for her kid and maybe doesn't know what to get or can't afford the most expensive thing. Or maybe just that weekend warrior. Or that weekend warrior who just wants a system so they can sit down, play mad in a couple times, you know, or, or just kind of get their fix. Sure. I mean, it makes so sense. I, I think it's a mistake having a hard drive that small, but when you look at the rest of the specs in line with it, and you realize that that's how they arrived at that price point of two ninety nine, kind of all falls in place. Mm, yeah, I think you're right. I, I would have to spend more time just kind of doing that sort of comparison game and understanding the uh, the specs a little bit at, yeah. uh, on a deeper level. I will say this: it's almost guaranteed that they're going to undercut the PS4's base model. You know, they're 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 all digital edition. I can't imagine that Sony is going to be able to deliver uh, the same, you know, their all digital version at the same price point. It just doesn't seem likely. Probably not. Something tells me that the PS5 is going to be an expensive system, uh, even for the digital version. Yeah. yeah. Uh, As far as I know, there's still no prices on those, right? Or release date. 
or release date. So, okay, so I'm going to guess it'll be definitely at least $100 more than what we find out for Microsoft for, for each digital and non-digital, at least $100 more. And I'm going to say November, I'm going to go with like November 20th. Fuck it. That's my, okay. that's my latest prediction. I, I would agree with basically all of that. You know, um, I think uh, three ninety nine is a respectable price point for the uh, digital version. I'm expecting to see the Series X at four ninety nine. Okay. Um, that's not confirmed. Um, but there were some rumors that were kind of suggesting that Xbox has not confirmed it. They, basically, what happened was the leak went out, and Xbox is like, you know what? Fuck it. Here you go. This is what we're doing. Go on. Talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I think to quote them exactly, they said, let's make it official, right? Yeah, exactly. So, and kudos to them, you know, like they, they took an opportunity to like, just, just roll with it. I'm sure they were still waiting for the precise moment that they wanted to release the information. It didn't work out that way, but you know, they just took ownership of it and they're like, yep, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, yeah. their social media team was on point too, because <laughs> did you see that, you know, that meme with like the stuffed monkey with the eyes looking away, like over his shoulder and then looking forward. I don't think have I you? have. All right. <laughs> let's see. It. I, I got to find this. Um, but they like right around the time that all this was happening, which uh, I want to say it was like four o'clock in the morning, our time. Um, they they were starting to kind of uh, acknowledge that there was a rumor without acknowledging there was a rumor. Um, let me see if I can find it. Here we go. Here we go. I'm sure you've seen this before. All right, let's see. Dude, I've never seen that. No? Never. Huh. Huh. Yeah, I'm usually pretty good with memes and gifts, and I have never seen that. Interesting. It's kind of creepy um, in a way. Kind of. But uh, yeah, it's 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 not a new one. It's been around for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, like that, they dropped that before they actually confirmed the uh, the price point. That's and cool. So, you know, their social media team is on top of things. <laughs> well, that, that's one thing I do like about social is uh, it, it's changed so much in terms of how even companies like Wendy's do social and oh, man. Uh, they're, they're so on point. And at first you kind of thought, is this some sort of joke or like did their account get hacked? And you find out, no, this is just how they're doing shit now. Yeah. It's pretty wild. Well, but, yeah, I was going to say that brings us to uh, mailbag. Yeah, let's open it up. We got a couple questions there. What do you say? Yeah, let's do it. You want to take it away, Will? Sure. So, Joe, Joe Donuts, I almost said Joey Bag of Soda, or Joey, <laughs> Joey Can of Soda. Uh, <laughs> Joe Donuts says, have either of you ever had aspirations of game design, even a small amount? Do you have a game idea in your head? If not, if you were suddenly in Hideo Kojima's shoes, what kind of game would you make? Mm. Any thoughts to this, Drew? Well, uh, when I was younger... You know, I certainly had aspirations designing games, but um, programming is not for me. So I wouldn't want to get into that mm -hmm. aspect of things. Um, you know, maybe writing and creating could be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not something that I've ever really aspired to do. You know, I'm I'm pretty content playing the games. I'm content talking about them on the podcast. I'd like to think that this is my way of contributing to the industry, even if, you know, it's only for the dozens and dozens of listeners. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I think if anything, if I were to get involved in the industry, uh, you know, maybe musically would be fun. Mm. But, but even that, like, I don't play enough instruments where I feel like I would be capable enough to write the soundtrack for a game. I feel like you truly need to be multi-instrumentalist. To, to pull that off yes yes um well respectable answers i, I think this is a great question uh, i have definitely had moments where i thought about ideas and a lot of those ideas have slipped away kind of like dreams mm. and um i will say when i kind of reflected on the question again today i think it would be cool to make a game 
similar to uh what was that movie with Robin Williams? I think it's um What Dreams May Come, I believe, mm. and it's about mm-hmm. uh the afterlife and and death. I think yeah. it would be interesting to create some sort of indie game or even a triple A game about uh what it's like after dying like what yeah. you know are, is there an afterlife and create a game where maybe it's a, this sort of fictional afterlife game where you can do certain things uh things like that i generally think on about some of the games that i truly have had great experiences with and i try to expand on that with my own imagination hmm. so i know that's not a direct answer but that's kind of where my my headspace is when i think about games that i'd make because I, I don't sit there and i'm like oh i'm gonna make the next uh, i don't know call of duty like that's i, I don't give a shit you know, I want to make mm-hmm. something that would blow people away. And I agree when it comes to music, I wish I was as, as talented as some of the uh, people like Jeremy Soule or Michael McCann, mm-hmm. uh, people that I respect in the uh, the video game music department. I'd love to have their talent so I could create an entire soundtrack for a game. I think I would really, really enjoy that. Um, I think, uh, if anything, I would try to be like the next Frank Klepacki. He's sure. the guy who did the Command & Conquer yeah soundtracks and um like uh, it's one of my favorite combinations of rock and roll and metal with like an industrial vibe you know um if you've never heard his music give it a listen it is wholly unique i have actually when when you brought him up before with the yeah. command and conquer uh box set um mm. i definitely checked out some of his stuff yeah it's very it's, fitting it's very fitting and um, he has his own sound. Yes. You, know, you, you hear, you hear his music, whether you like it or you hate it, you hear his music and you know who it is. And I, I admire that, uh, you know, from any musician, when you hear, when you hear David Gilmore from Pink Floyd play guitar, you, you only need two notes. You know exactly who it is. You know, oh, yeah. I've, I've always wanted to be that kind of musician that, you know, has an identifiable sound. Yeah, and it's, uh, I don't know much about it, but I think without going off on a music tangent, I think a lot of those guys are tweaking with stuff for years and they just totally. kind of stick with something and they're like, you know what, I think this this is going to be my tone or this is going to mm. be my signature sound and it's yeah. amazing how they're able to do that. De- uh, Devin Townsend, which I know uh, you're a big fan of as well oh, yeah. too, he's another prime example. You know, you don't need to hear him sing Nope. Uh, and he's just it's you hear that guitar it's oh man it's Devin. oh yeah even his so, uh like mellow stuff like casualties of cool and which i mm-hmm. fucking love that album uh when you mm-hmm. hear that kind of softer stuff you just know it's him uh and it's totally. so hard to replicate those sounds as well very much so uh son of a fitch asks if you can have any console miniaturized into a handheld to bring on the go what would it be any thoughts drew I, I feel like I'm cheating on this one because it actually already is a miniature console. Um, the Turbo Turbo Express, ah. uh, which is the miniaturized TurboGrafx-16. It was a fully handheld TurboGrafx-16 that played full TurboGrafx-16 games with no limitations aside from the fact that the system was massive for a handheld, ate up batteries, and uh, was quite expensive even back in the day. Nowadays, if you want to find one in good condition that's been repaired and modded up, you're looking at five to six hundred dollars. Sure. Do you um, uh, do you remember that video I sent you on that? Honestly, I don't. So some time ago, I sent you this video called uh, Turbo Graphics 16 Express, a memento or something like that. And uh, I remember you were like, I don't know what this is. And I was like, keep watching. You're like, oh, this is the TurboGrafx Express or whatever. And mm. uh, I'll have to send it to you again because it's one of the greatest. Wasn't it just like a, a bunch of like vanity shots? Yeah, that's it. I remember now. I remember yeah. that now. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. I just remember cool. watching it like years ago. And I was like, oh, this is a really well done showcase video. Yeah. Yeah. It's... um. It's not a very luxurious looking system. <laughs> it's, no, the video it's tried kind of, though. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of a chonky boy. <laughs> chonky yeah, boy. Very, very thick. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've always wanted one. Yeah. Uh, you know, outside of that, I think it'd be really cool to have a miniaturized uh, PlayStation One. Mm-hmm. 
you know, that's a console that being disc based uh, would really just not work as a handheld. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, Sony made a bunch of the, the PS1 games available for download on the PSP and on the Vita. So that's as close as we can get, you know? Yeah. Uh, I think I still have to go with my initial thought, which was the Nintendo 64. Mm. I've been bringing that system up a lot late, lately, and I think it's just because I, I had so many good memories with it, and I have this weird fascination with the system and the library, mm. and uh, I'd love to see that in a portable format. I, I'm not sure how that would look or play out, uh, no pun intended, but it would be kind of cool to have it in almost like a super boy uh, yeah. situation where you got the cartridge hanging out the top. Well, if if you are interested in pursuing uh, emulation further, there are a number of handheld uh, em emulation systems that are capable of doing N64 games. Um, there's been a lot of them coming out. I think Son of a Fish just actually ordered one recently, and I'm not too sure on the specs of it and what it can and cannot do, uh, but... You know, there. If you look around, there's a ton of options out there. I can send you a link to a great YouTube channel that covers those pretty extensively. Mm. If that if that's a rabbit hole you'd like to go down. Oh, potentially. So. Catch me on the right mood. I'll definitely go down a rabbit hole any day. Oh yeah, his, his channel's great too. ETA Prime uh, is the YouTube channel. I've been watching him for a long time. He does a lot of uh, tutorials on how to set up. Uh, Raspberry Pis with RetroPie. He does tutorials on LaunchBox, but he also reviews a lot of devices uh, from an emulation perspective. So he'll do a lot of like um, single board computers. He'll do handheld devices. He'll do DIY kits. He'll do just about everything and do whatever he can to run it through the paces to see if it can handle you know video well, if it can handle audio, if it can play certain games, how accurate the emulation is. And he's just one of those guys that when he explains something, he doesn't fuck around. He doesn't, you know, throw down like this, this video. It's like, hey, yo, it's your boy T. I got to drop the like and a subscribe, oh, you know, God. you know, like that kind of stuff. He's just like, hey, guys, ZTA Prime back again. Today, I'm going to review this. Oh, and then dude, he just, I just uh, sorry. And he, he goes into it and he speaks clearly and concisely. And when he's given instructions, you can follow them. I've watched more of his tutorials on like RetroPie stuff than I can even count. I, that's great to hear. And it's refreshing yeah. because you're absolutely right. And even though it's 2020, uh, YouTube still has a lot of the, uh, you know, exactly what you said. Like, hey, guys, it's T. Martin, too. And today we're going to. And it's just like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Why are you coming in at like a hundred miles per hour, dude? Yeah. And you don't turn it off either. Um, right. Oh, I can't deal with that anymore. I used to watch a lot of that stuff, you know, just years ago when I was looking for tips and tricks on certain games, but man, um, yeah. mm, can't deal with it. Yep. I'm with you, man. Uh, that just about does it, man. Um, we, we did get a late question from Patrick at Retrospectus Podcast. Uh, any guesses on the PlayStation price now that we have the Xbox One? We've already actually do, uh, talked about that during the episode. Mm -hmm. So uh, no need to ask it again. But Patrick, we did see you. So just wanted to give you a shout out for that. And uh, check out their podcast. It's pretty great. If you haven't heard them yet. Oh, yeah, please do. RSpodcast.net. It's one of my favorite shows. And we had them on maybe 10 episodes ago. I want to say, yeah, those fifteen. Those guys should train all of these nonsense YouTubers how to actually speak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't mean it to have that kind of laughter content, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I seriously, um, Patrick and um, oh my James. gosh, James, sorry, James, I was just blanking there for a minute. I'm very hungry. <laughs> Uh, you guys are incredibly well-spoken. I remember telling you guys that when you're on the show and it was really nice to, uh, to experience that. And I think mm. that more people should just take their time and just be a little bit more eloquent sometimes. And I, I don't think we have to be so over the top on YouTube to, to get subscribers and likes. Mm. Agreed. Yeah. So anything else you want to add before we wrap this thing up? Uh, no, I'm excited to play some games actually tonight. I'm really excited. I don't know why. I just think 
so much talk about games and, and so such a lack of actually getting to play a lot of them over this past four day weekend. Uh, mm. I was just had a lot going on. Uh, I'm excited now to just kind of veg out to something. So, yeah, I can relate to that. I've, I've had a project that I've been like just going over time on lately. And, uh, it's just one of those things that's been lingering for a long time and I've been chipping away at it, but I just, uh, I made a final push to get it finished. And it's like this huge weight's been lifted off my shoulders. Good. So I'm kind of looking forward to just taking a step back and relaxing before I dive into the next thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have I have other stuff lined up. I just, uh, you know, this one I had to get done. The others are a little more casual, so. Well, you're generally in high demand, Drew. <sighs> I mean, yeah, I'm a popular dude. I don't know. What else to say? Yeah, you've got like a laundry list of, uh, you know, projects most of the time. Yeah, I mean, I had this this thing that I filmed last March that I was uh, finishing up for a client, and um, that's been finished now. And now it's it's moving on to a personal project, a short film that I made last year for my uh, my final project for my film and TV course. And while I turned in the final product for the grade, I was unhappy with the way the color correction was done on it because it's not something I'd ever done before. Mm -hmm. So I held off on sharing it with the public until um, I had a chance to sit with it and fix that up. And now that I actually have some, some free time, you know, I've gotten rid of the, the paid uh, gig, you know, that's all set and done. Now I feel like I can actually move on to this. So that's my goal. I'm going to uh, try to finish that up and, you know, I can kind of go at a slower pace with that. It's a little less demanding, um, but I do want to get it done in 2020. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, awesome. Um, I'm I'm terrible. Anyway, <laughs> make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and leave a review on iTunes. Smash it. Um, smash that like button. Uh, <laughs> Follow us on the web at WDGRpodcast.com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at WDGRpodcast. You can find me at Scion Storm. And Will, how can they find you? SoundCloud.com slash Will underscore gear. That's it, everybody. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>